Don't anyone leave this theater. The Royal Romanov diamonds are missing. I am Sam Grunion, private eye at your service. Secrecy is my motto. I never tell. You will notice even my business card has nothing on it. I am the same Sam Grunion who solved the international uranium mining swindle. Scotland Yard was baffled. The FBI was baffled. They sent for me and the case was solved immediately. I confessed. The Roman up diamonds still missing are valued at $1 million. For 11 years I trailed them through the Khyber Pass, over the Pyrenees, round the Cape of Good Hope and into Gimbel's basement. From Gimbel's basement, the trail led me to a group of struggling young actors trying to put on a show. Did the diamonds bring them luck, money? Hardly. Once again was repeated the same pattern. A story of danger, cruelty, black violence, mystery, murder. By the way, what do you suppose the story was called? <laughs> love happy. Love happy, I'm love happy. It's wonderful to know the meaning of happy. And if I do so because of you, we are my Heart happy, I'm kiss happy. Whoever would believe that I'd be this happy? Why are sky blue? It's all because of you. Oh, my darling, my daisy, I may be crazy, but haven't you found that we're doing what we like? And gee whiz, we feel like kids on a merry-go-round. Night happy and day happy I see a future where I'm gonna stay happy And I know why all my dreams come true Cause you're love happy too Mike Johnson. Interesting dance, isn't it? He landed fighting off bill collectors. That's Maggie Phillips. She's in love with Mike. She's a dancer too, but it's hard to tell when she's sitting down. This is Maggie's best friend, Bunny Dolan. She invested her last $300 in the show. It looks like a cold winter ahead, so she's knitting herself an electric blanket. Is there a Band-Aid in the house? These love-happy kids who were struggling for success had two things in common. They were underfinanced and undernourished. Today, they had already missed breakfast, and their hopes for lunch are pinned on one man, Harpo, the strolling delicatessen. Here he is, shopping. Looks like a classy store, doesn't it? Well, in the front, they specialize in hot delicacies, but in the back, they specialize in hot diamonds. Bless you, my man. Bless you.
Well, Michelici, you are just in time. The sardines have arrived. Relax and wipe that smirk off your face. There are policemen around. Yes, madam. We shall wait in your office. Yes, madam. Arriving Wednesday on the Queen Mary. I have it. I have it. Quiet, Lefty. It's in the third crate marked on the bottom. I said quiet. I want to enjoy this moment. I have gone through a great deal. How many commissars did I marry, Alphonse? Five, Madame Miguelici. There were three more, were they not? Yes, the Grand Duke and the two ambassadors. Eight weddings in three months before I could track down the royal Romanov necklace on its trail from bridegroom to bridegroom. And alone, the jewels are finally in my possession. If you please, Lefty. The royal Romanov necklace. One million dollars in matchless diamonds. I have all done, even myself. There is something wrong, Lefty. Wrong? Oh, no, impossible. This is not the right can. I beg to differ, madam. It is the right one. Where is the can with the Maltese cross on You've it? You've got it. You're holding it. This can has no Maltese cross on the top or on the bottom of it. Uh, it can't be. The Maltese cross was on it. I saw it. I kissed it. It must have rubbed off. It was put on with special adhesive paint. A generation of rubbing could not have removed it. Mr. Throckmorton, may I present these Otto brothers? The specialty is taking care of people I do not like. Oh, no, no, no. Let me open it, madam. The diamonds are in here. <coughs> oh. 
Those hardly look like the Royal Romanov diamonds, Lefty. You may proceed, gentlemen. Oh! oh. Eight marriages wasted. The other lake, Hannibal. I'm afraid you have to stop. I cannot concentrate. You are wasting your time, gentlemen. Mr. Throckmorton is too feeble a character to try to deceive me. Revive him. I can't understand her. I can't understand. I can't understand. Quiet. It. Who was present when you found the tin with the Maltese cross? Well, no one, not a soul. The door was locked. I put it in my pocket. I... Wait. Yes, there was someone. Strange looking creature. Looked more like a tramp than a truckman. You will call the police. Inform them that the bushy haired shoplifter has been at work at Herbert and Herbert's. Give them a full description. Offer a reward of $1,000 for his capture. Have all the suspects brought to my apartment, one at a time. Police headquarters, please. <laughs> Here's another Broadway hopeful, Faustino the Great. For 20 years, he was an organ grinder with a monkey. Then one day, the monkey went on strike. He wanted shorter hours and longer bananas. Now, Faustino is a mind reader, if he only had a mind. OK, kids, take five minutes. Excuse me, you Mike Johnson. What do you want? I'm looking for a job. Wrong number. I'm all cast. Hey, just a minute. You're missing a big bet. Somebody told me you're putting on a show with unknowns. You're hiding a people who's never been heard of. <laughs> well, I'm the most unknown and unheard of actors who've never been on Broadway. What's your name? Faustino the Great. You never heard of me, huh? No. <laughs> what did I tell you? What are you unknown for? <laughs> I don't like it to brag, but the thing I'm the most unknown for is a mind reading. I give you a demonstration. You're thinking of something. Right so far. Uh -huh. You're thinking of a nice juicy steak with a French or fried the potatoes. The exit's over there. All right, you don't want a mind reader? What else do you want? Maybe you need a juggler. No juggler. How about an usher? I bring her my own flashlight. Hello, Lyons. Mr. Lyons, so glad to see you. You're looking wonderful. Yeah, you sure are. Mr. Yorkman's supposed to be here at 10 o'clock. It's 11.30. Don't worry, partner. He'll show. Don't tell me to don't worry, and please don't call me partner. I'm removing all my costumes and scenery. As of now. The man's mad, pulling out of the biggest Broadway smash since Showboat. Don't tell me about smashes. Mr. Yorkman was going to be here to underwrite the show. Check. I told you exactly what he told me. Well, he ain't here. Check. OK, now we come to the next step. The situation is either Mr. Yorkman or $1,100, or I move the stuff off the stage. As of now. Hey, wait a minute. Excuse me, you, Mr. Lyons? That's right. That's so lucky I meet you. You know, I was just talking to Max Yorkman in his office. Are you a friend of Mr. Yorkman? Friend? <laughs> Max and I are just like that. Two heads on the same neck. Well, I'm glad to meet you. <laughs> you know, Max said to me, uh, Faustino, you want a job? Go over see Mike Johnson. I'm back in that show. He'll give you a job. That's what he said, Mr. Johnson. That's good enough for me. <laughs> He's back in the show, you said? Uh, using your common sense. Would I be here if he wasn't? I've been trying to get Mr. Yorkman on the phone to find out. Ah, you don't have to bother with the Max no more. Just talk to me. 
Okay. Maybe I was a little hasty about removing the stuff. <laughs> That's only natural. You can't trust for nobody in a show business. Maybe he really knows Mr. Yorkman. It's a buggy ride. This whole show is a buggy ride. I'm a hired, huh? Yes, sir. That's a fine. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. How much do you pay me? That kind of talk's gonna get you nowhere. Nobody in this show gets paid. Not till we open and click. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I just was thinking out loud. I'm a no-ham. Ham. Ham! Something's happened. It's lunchtime and he isn't here. Who isn't here? Harpo. Hey, Jim. Have you seen any funny face tramps with bushy hair? Yeah, there's a thousand dollars reward. <laughs> Everybody's been waiting. You're late with the food. Thank you, lady. Sardines? Portuguese, skinless, eyeless sardines? What cruelty, what barbarism. I thank you, no, sir. May you may keep your sardines. Got something for me? You want I should read your mind again? Or I to start thinking? You're thinking of the same thing you thought about yesterday and of the day before. That's the only thought you got, huh? Beautiful girl is going to smile at you. That's the only thing you want. This beautiful girl should smile at you. All right, stop thinking now. What do you got for me? And no one of sardines. You promised me something special. Hmm. Ice cream. Tootsie Fruitsie ice cream. Robin Hood has struck again. I'll have these tomorrow. Places on stage, Bunny. You're next. 
Bonnie Dolan, next number. Rehearsal. Gather round me, my children. Lift up your curly blonde heads. Cause mommy's got something to ask you before you crawl into your nice warm beds. Mama wants to know who stole that gem, who's been in her nice clean kitchen, who stole that gem? Was it little Tom or Sue or Mabel, who snuck it off the table, even ate the label? Mama wants to know who made this mess? Mama's gonna kick some teeth in if you don't confess. Mama wasn't looking when that stuff was tooken. None of you had better scram. Who stole a jam? Mama's not the type that gets excited. She's locked those groceries home without a squawk. But Mama's gotta find that guilty party. One of you kids has to talk. Mama wants to know who stole that jam, who's been rifling all those goodies, ate her leg of lamb. Seems to me you're acting kind of flustered. Bet you ate that custard and topped it off with mustard. Mama wants to know, she don't want to guess. Mama's going to kick some teeth in if you don't confess. You're that little elephant which snuck it off the shell of. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Thank you for your work, officer. But this creature's not the man. Good day. Yes, sir. Better luck next time. The wrong one again. We'll have to increase the reward. Answer it. Oh, if ever I lay my hands on that thief, I promise you he'll regret he was ever born. I picked him up on me beat. Thought you might want to have a look at him and see if he's your man. Bushy hair and funny face, the sergeant told me. Yes, yes. Excuse me, officer. Hang on to him. I'll be back in a minute. That's the one. Are you certain? Absolutely. He's our man, I tell you. What do we do? of you to take this trouble, officer. No trouble at all, ma'am. Is this the fellow you're looking for? No, he's not. But there is a superficial resemblance. Nothing more. Okay, baby. No, just a second. Don't send him at me like that. The poor man looks miserable and lost and without a friend. And he looks so intelligent. I would like to do something for him. Would you mind leaving him here, please, officer? I'd be a little careful if I were you, ma'am. You can't trust characters like these. Oh, but he looks so utterly harmless and, and hungry. Please, officer. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Very uh, we'll be much. keeping Thank up the you. search. That's very kind. Uh, you sir, sir, goodbye. Thank you you crummy much. little water. Mr. Throckmorton, I must ask you to leave. Yes, sir. She's giving him the whammy.
I am Madame Igalici. I've been looking for you for a long time. Because I think you may have something for me. Alphonse, Hannibal, search him. Honeyball, you will wait in the other room. I think we'll be more comfortable alone, don't you? I like you. I like you very much. I don't want you to be lonesome and miserable. I want to ask you a few questions. A few personal questions. But you mustn't lie to me. I do not like it when people lie to me. I get offended. Alphonse, Hannibal! This creature won't talk. There are ways of making him talk. I give the orders here. When did the devil... Stop that! What did you do with the sardine cans? Answer me. Oh, take him away. Give him everything. And when she says everything, she means everything. For who knows better than I about Madame Igalici? Disguised as Count Negalesco, I tussle with her in Bucharest. And as Agnes McTavish, I tussle with her in Glasgow. Finally, as ally Ben Pasha, I tussle with her. Well, it was too hot to tussle, so we went swimming. <laughs> Meanwhile, Faustino had kept the show alive by keeping lions happy. He offered him all kinds of tempting inducements. A dozen harmonicas. A solid mahogany lamp table. A sterling silver trash basket. A set of the Encyclopedia Britannica. But Lyons was no dope. He selected the blonde on the end. Faustino told him the blonde was married, Lyons got very angry. He said if he didn't get the money in the morning, he would close the show. Meanwhile, the cast went on with dress rehearsal, unaware of the troubles ahead. All right, kids, let's get set for the Sadie Thompson number. Now, don't forget, you're on an island where you haven't seen a dame in months, so look hungry. Look hungry? Are you kidding? <laughs> okay, Jim, put on the rain. Okay. Let's go. 
Fine, Maggie. Now go change into your valley costume. Meanwhile, Madame Igalici, wearing the pants of the dreaded Catwoman, was desperately trying to make Harpo talk. Twice came the Hungarian rope torture. For six hours, Harpo sat in a chair smoking rope.
four hours on the hideous rack. An original from the workshop of the fiendish Ferdinand von Krakowitz of Monte Carlo. Place your bets, place your bets. For eight hours, another little appliance designed by the same Ferdinand, the Krakowitz Crusher Washer. With this machine, you can wash your underwear without taking it off. Papa wouldn't talk, Madame Igalici decided to take things in her own hands. And that meant only one thing, her own specialty, the insidious food and water torture. Still dripping. Has he slept? Not a wink. Eden? Not a bite. Three days without breaking. It's rather unusual. After I finished eating, bring him in, and we shall give him the apple test. You have refused to speak. We shall keep on firing until you tell me what I want to know about a certain can of Portuguese sardines. Fire! Back on your head. Ooh. Nothing must happen to him. He's the only living soul who can lead us to the sardine can. The gun isn't loaded, is it, Alphonse? No, madame, it's, it's empty. He hasn't the nerve, he won't shoot. There were only four bullets in it, weren't there? That's right, madame. Grab him. The gun is empty. got no heart. They want to sing, they want to dance. But what do you say? You say no. You say stop the music. Who's are you? Tuscanini? Hapo! Some sort of code. Mr. Lyon, stop with the noise. Stop with the moving. It's a Hapo. Where is he? Shh. I'm reading his mind. Clear your head. You talk too fast. Clear your head. That's a better. He's having a party. Everybody's hitting him with apples. <laughs> it's a lots of fun, eh? Hey, what do you think? A beautiful woman is in love with him for his sardines. What? You don't say. This a beautiful woman wants to marry him. 
how much money she's got. Tell her to come to the Windsor Theater. We got a lots of sardines here. Yeah. They are at the Windsor Theater. He says she's a richer woman. Well, stop a thinking. Listen to me. We're in a trouble. You bring her to the theater right away in a half an hour. Hurry up, quick. Stop her for nothing. Everything is a fine. Harpo save at the show. He's bringing us a bride with a lot of money. I ain't falling for any more stalls. It's a no stall. It's a love. She's a bringing the money. Boys, keep moving the stuff out. Hey, you musician? Well, I used to play. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it the first minute I look on him. I say to myself, this Mr. Lines, he's not the top like he looks. <laughs> he's got a something in his side. Something comes up from the heart. What kind of music you like? Uh, I like gypsy music. Gypsy music? It's a magnifico. I like a gypsy music. Hey, stop with the moving. Stop with the noise. Everybody stop. Mr. Lyons, he's going to play. Here. Uh, do you know play gypsy play? No, I don't know that. Uh, you know uh, gypsy serenade? No. What do you know? Uh, I know gypsy love song. Gypsy love song. Yeah, but I only know the chorus. That's all right. I played the voice and you follow me. Uh, all right, you play the verse and I'll noodle around. What do you mean by noodling? Like this. <laughs> That's a good. You noodle on that, I macaroni on this. Now, look, Mr. Lyons, I know you want to make a good impression, but the please don't play better than me. Same thing. It's very good. Now we try the chorus. But the chorus we play pianissimo. You know what pianissimo is? No. How long have you study music? Fifteen years. Fifteen. You know, two more years you could have been a plumber? <laughs> all right, all right. Never mind the pianissimo. I'm going to make it very simple for you. We play it allegro pizzicato. That's what you call them, a high class Carnegie Hall stuff. You know allegro pizzicato? No. You know Jimmy pizzicato? No. None of the pizzicatos, eh? No. What do you know? Uh, I know pistachio. Pistachio? <laughs> we'll play it. <laughs> Thank you. 
We play one more chorus. Come on. Well, boys and girls, I've got a little sad news for you. Our show isn't opening. We're closing tonight without a shot at Broadway. Mr. Max Yorkman, who promised to underwrite our production, has seen fit to remain invisible, together with his bankroll. Mr. Lyons, a man of small faith, is therefore removing the scenery and costumes from the production. Uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, may I suggest that we do what all actors have always done since before the days of Thespis and William Shakespeare, perform without scenery or costumes or salary? Sorry, I can't go on with that kind of a show. Curtains down, school's out. Better luck next time. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Johnson, but Mr. Lyons said to take everything. Uh-huh. Well, go ahead, say it. I wasn't going to say anything. You don't have to put it into words, baby. It's sticking out of your eyes. I'm yellow, no guts. Not at all, Mike. You're just what you are. And what's that? A very nice, sweet, sensitive young man who doesn't belong in show business. Thanks. Here, have some good hot coffee. And we'll discuss your next career. An orangeade stand would be interesting, don't you think? You'd look stunning in an apron surrounded by nice yellow oranges. Here, have some sardines. I don't want any sardines. I'm not throwing a bear turkey on the stage. I'm quitting, Maggie. And don't start waving a flag and telling me the show must go on. So relax. It's over. No, it isn't over. We're going to open without scenery, without costumes. Just with talent and people. We're going to open and knock them dead. Hallelujah. Come on, let's get out of here. We'll get something to eat and celebrate. What's there to celebrate? Today's your birthday. Don't change the subject. Listen, Mike, we've got a good show here. If you'd only try to... What do you to... think life is, a fairy tale? Yes, it is. Fairy tales. Sardines. What do you want? Could you tell me, please, where I can find Mr. Michael Johnson? You, you're speaking to the gentleman in person. Oh, how wonderful. You are really Mr. Johnson? What can I do for you? Oh, Mr. Johnson, so much. Y you mean on the show? You have a place for me, I'm sure. Too bad, Miss... Uh... Uh, Madame Iglici. Madame Iglici? Mr. Johnson, you must have a place for me. Not anymore. But why? Because of a bankroll we haven't got. What I'm trying to say, Madame, without breaking into unmanly tears, is that we're folding our show, calling it a day. Better luck next time, Madame Miguelici. Oh, uh, you mean to say the show is not going to open and the actors are going away? Oh, oh no, that... How much money do you need, Mr. Johnson? A loan from Congress would help. Mr. Johnson, I am serious. I will supply the money. What kind of a voice do you have? Oh, oh no, not for myself. Uh, I'm a lover of the theater. I can see you have talent, great talent. And the show must go on. Hallelujah. This is over my head, Mike. What's going on? It's simple. Didn't you say life was a fairy tale? Well, here's our fairy godmother with a wand. And what a wand. Madame Igalici, 
I need $1,100 to raise the curtain. You're not kidding, are you? Shall we go to your office, Mr. Johnson? Let's go. You are going to make me so happy, so happy. He's taking a long time for a business deal. He'll be back. Oh, don't be a fool. Let's go. Sorry, Bunny. I promised. <laughs> Told you never to eat your dinner in this room. Cheer up, honey. Maybe he's breaking your heart to make a better actress out of you. Baby, we're opening. Lyons is bringing back the scenery and costumes. That's wonderful. Yes, she was really wonderful. She's mad about the theater, and she liked all of my ideas. She's a real showwoman. You can tell me all about it at dinner. Oh, I almost forgot. You'd better struggle along without me tonight. Rita and I still have a lot to discuss, and I promised her that I would... But, baby, I know it's your birthday, but this is important. Now be a trooper. Cheer up. Everything looks wonderful. It would look better if you'd wipe the rouge off your mouth. Oh, don't get any ideas, Maggie. I was so excited when I saw the money, I had to kiss somebody. I've got to run. See you tomorrow. Happy birthday. Do you want all these cans open, madame? Yes. But these open cans may attract attention. What shall I do with them? In the alley. The alley? Done. You like a sardines? Yes. Why, have you got any? No, but I got a something better. I got a something that's worth a million dollars to you. Really? What is it? Love. It come to me like a flash. The first minute I see you. That's what you call them, love at the first to look. It's a kind of love that's never going to die. Uh, would you do something for me? Anything. I climb the highest mountain, down and up, up and down. I put my arm in the fire, up at the hill for you. Uh, go and uh, get me all the sardine cans you can find in this theater. Sardines? Ha! That's nothing. I'm going to cover you with the sardines. That's how much I love you. Watch for my smoke. Darling. My favorite animals, cats. I collect them. Darling. Darling. Edwig Vici, at last our search is over. Here is the cat. Oh. Where is the necklace? In here. Really, Throckmorton? I'm sure of it. He was eating the sardines and he swallowed the necklace. Oh, but that is impossible. I'll have him examined at once. I know get you your sardines. I got you something better. What? Anchovies. I have no use for them. 
Maybe you like a kippered herring, smelts, a smoked white fish. I get you any kind of a fish you like. I love you. Ah, oh, signorina gentile, belle di statura, can show you quando. Harpo. It must be wonderful to be like you, Harpo. You live alone. That is, you don't need other people. You don't depend on them. You never get hurt. Oh, Harpo, you're wonderful. Harpo, I've got an idea. I've been a fool, letting my heart stand in my way. But it's not too late. He'll still give me the part. Tomorrow morning, Mr. Hammerstein. Can you imagine me in a Broadway production? A star, a real star. And I'll work. No more nickel Romeos for me. I'll work and keep going and get famous. And we'll be rich together. And Harpo, you'll be with me because you've always loved me. I haven't anyone except you. And from now on, you'll be my manager too. We'll be famous together. We'll scale the heights of Broadway together. A star and her manager. We'll be important people, Harpo. You'll be the most influential manager on the Great White Way. You'll have a whole suite of offices and a great big shiny mahogany desk. You'll be just as famous as me, Harpo. Everyone will come to your office and call you on the phone, all the great stars and writers and producers, to beg you to help them. And you'll audition all the great singers and dancers. They'll want advice about new plays, begging to work in your productions, our productions. You'll be rich and important, Harpo. You and I both. We'll have everything we ever dreamed of. Everything. <laughs> Sorry, Harpo. I'm afraid everything isn't very much without that rotten, horrible Mike Johnson. And on my birthday, too. He had to do it on my birthday. Yes, and he knew it was. Oh, I hope I never, never have another birthday. <laughs>
Harpo, oh, what would I do without you? You've made this the nicest birthday I've ever had. show was opening. When Mackinac, my faithful operator, reported that Madame Michelici had put money in the show, I knew a crisis was at hand. Now I was close to what I'd been trailing all these years. Madame Michelici, I, I, I mean the diamonds. Immediately, I started for the theater. Incognito, of course. Mackinac, you now have a full record of the case, and tonight at the opening of the play, you may have the solution. For when the curtain rises, Madame Michelici will be in the front box. And sitting next to her will be Count Bulabase. But if you take away the Count Silk Hat, his opera cloak, and his full dress suit, you'll have me shivering in my underwear. Underwear! Come along, Mackinaw. 
We will be just in time to be fashionably late. Good evening. I'm Ivan. Well, don't fret about it. You can always change it to Tom, Dick, or Harry. They get around a lot. Come, Mackinac. Hey, that's not my suit you're pulling. Give me the diamond necklace. We've only just met and already he's asking me for things. I'm from the Romanovs. To recover the diamonds, we paid you 100,000 zlotys. Zlotys. Did you ever try to spend a zloty in this country? The diamonds. When one hour you die. Oh, yes, Maganor. Allow me to introduce you to the man who's going to kill me. At the sound of the next musical note, the end of my life will be brought to you by the Bolivar Sand Company. Is your watch running fast? Would you like me to drop a little sand in it? A few more grains of sand to fall and you will die. I think I'm ready. Don't hurry. I've got plenty of time. I hope you're not going to all that trouble for me. I've used nothing but an electric razor for years. Hmm. This will never do. I got to hide like an elephant. By the way, did you ever try to hide an elephant? You will be dead in five minutes. <laughs> For your information, my doctor gave me three years to live, and I don't intend to make a fool out of him. Come in. Is there anything I can do for you? What a ridiculous statement. Mr. Grenion, I want you to help me. I have a little sand left. What seems to be the trouble? Some men are following me. Really? I can't understand why. I advise you to leave. I'll take you down to the bus station. Oh, uh, if I'm not back tonight, go ahead without me. That's been the history of all my romances. <laughs> X-rays of the cat, madame. I see nothing. I know. I, I can't understand it. Report to the Zoto brothers immediately. Yes, madame. Time, five minutes. All right, I'm a heel. That's not news. Could you love a heel that's been repaired? I came back last night to get you, ten minutes after you'd left. You did? Uh-huh. With a clean face. What's all that? Harpo gave them to me. I thought it might improve the costume. Uh-uh. Too phony. Tomorrow, if we're not stoned to death by the mob, I'll get you a real gem for the proper finger. Mike.
Let's search the place before we take it away. Yeah. <laughs> What do you want? I should read your mind? <laughs> I'm too busy now. The shows are going to stop. I'm telling you, too excited. I can't read your mind. All right, I read your mind. What's on your mind? Yeah, it's a dame. <laughs> All the time you got a dame on your mind. Oh, it's a no dame. It's a nice girl. <laughs> yeah, what about a nice girl? <laughs> That's what you call a nice girl? You crazy. That's a dog. A dog? What about a dog? A big dog? A police dog? Big, big dog? St. Bernard dog. Bigger, bigger dog? Great Dane. A Great Dane? What about a Great Dane? Great Dane got a dimple? Great Dane got a whiskers? That's my jaw. Great Dane, jaw, 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 Great Danger! Oh, oh, who's the girl in Great Danger? I can't read your hand. I can only read your mind. <laughs> That's a billy goat. That's a Cholson. A singer, Mammy. Mammy goat. Mammy. 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 With the key? My key? My key? My key? My key? My key? My key? Maggie! Maggie! Oh, Maggie's in a great danger. Oh, smart, huh? Oh, I catch on it quick. Maggie's in a great danger. Who's after Maggie? That's a bird. A seagull? A bigger bird? A turkey bird? A big, big bird? A stool pigeon? That's a Yankee Doodle. Yankee Doodle boy. That's the flag. On top of the flag. There's an eagle. A eagle. A eagle. What, what about an eagle? Eagle a scratch? Eagle a tickle? Eagle a got fleas? Eagle a nervous? Ah, hey, stop, you're making me itchy. Itchy? Eagle, itchy, eagle, itchy, eagle, itchy, eagle, eagle itchy. Eagle itchy! Eagle itchy! Oh, eagle itchy. What eagle itchy gonna do to Maggie? That's the horse. A horse run away with Maggie? Horse to fall down on Maggie? That's a hammer, a nail. No hammer. A nail. A big nail. A little nail. Little bitsy nail. A little, little bitsy. Tack. A tack. Tack. Wet tack. Wet tack. Wet tack. Wet tack. Horse, wet tack. Horse, wet tack. Horse, wet track. Horse, wet track. Horse, wet track. Mother. 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 Mother, mother, a 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 now remember, this is opening night. Now let's hear those lines and put a little heart into it. Perfume from Hindustan. Oil from Arabia. Diamonds from Africa. Come on, we'll take her to the hotel. But there's a show on! We're not interested. We'll keep her there until she tells us where she hit the diamonds. Hey, don't take it away. I confess. I got her the diamonds. I find them. Where are they? Right here. But I don't give them to you. Here, Hoppo. We've got an escape. Hoppo, this way. Help me hold the door. We got to keep chasing us. If they find out we don't got the real diamonds, they want to stop at the show. Kill Maggie. Now I got to get back in the theater. Hurry, you go.
the matter with you two? He was right here. Where did he go? Oh, no. What are you doing there, you idiot? Why did you just grab it? Oh, no! I saw it. You two are out of here. I'm the hero, nobody else.
I got him! Hey! Hey! Leave up, oh Lord! He's the real diamonds! Look! 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 Mm. I got him! Odds were a thousand to one that I wouldn't make it, but here I was, back on the trail. At the risk of death, I fearlessly scrutinized every possible hiding place. Don't you remember me? Yes, I do. No, I mean before that. Grunion, I am warning you. This time, I am going to get the diamonds, and no one is going to stop me. Oh, no, I'm not going to follow you and get shot. If I was half shot, I'd follow you. those diamonds, you fool. You wanted the diamonds? Sure, I give them to you. Now, what are you going to give me? That's not what I want. Where are they? You got them. The real ones. Those are the real ones. Harpo, he's a god of the fakes. I was just about to enter the battle myself. From now on, I'm going to take care of you. You've got the axe, of course. I'm 
complete command of the situation. I didn't see a thing. All the window shades were down. Search him. Oh, no, I'm not going to get into that. If this were a French picture, I could do it. I'll search him myself. No, the diamonds have kept us apart too long. I'll tackle them single-handed. I'd kill anyone who's got those diamonds. Grognon, darling. Careful, you're singeing my coat. I don't care about the diamonds. All I really want is you. So, you finally fell for me, eh? Yes. This is the sweetest moment of my life. Come, my darling. Goodbye, old man. It was nice knowing you. Please, you're tickling my change pocket. Oh, my darling, let's get away together, just you and I. What fun we'll have. We'll stop at Rivera, Monte Carlo, Rio de Janeiro. Yeah, but first we'll stop at the unemployment insurance office and I'll pick up my check. how the long search ended, with the diamonds in the pocket of a happy-go-lucky clown who disappeared with them, never realizing their true value. Anyway, that was six cases ago. Right now, I'm hot on the trail of the Calcutta cutthroats, and I've tracked them down to a good humor plant in Istanbul. Answer that, my man. I'm busy. Gin, huh? 10, 30, 40, 47, 50, 60. Fine 10, assistant. 20, 30. I hope they're not playing for money. Yes? Yes, dear. Yes, I'll be home, dear. No, I won't be late, dear. Six o'clock, we're on the dock. Yes, dear. Goodbye, dear. My wife. Formerly, Madame Egalici. Love, happy, love, happy. It's wonderful to know the meaning of happy. And I 